previously on The Real Forex Trader. Now that you've got live accounts, Ben is going to be running background checks, AML checks, which will check whether or not people have got criminal records, whether or not you're politically exposed. It was just kind of, it was a horrendous situation, but it's not really something that, that you want to go into, do you know what I mean? I don't really want to share about my family history, do, 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 do you know what I mean? It's like, it's personal. The thing is, you're the only one that's broken the rules, so it's just yeah. one more and then that's it. Yeah, I'd, I'd made a mistake, I think it was just too forced. Why do you get angry when you lose a trade? Your, your words? It's not easy, Alex, I know. It means a lot to me to be here, you know, to, yes. just to just to be part of that team, you know. I think we're now starting to see some of the issues. Today we're down $500 net. But I think the only reason why we're not losing much is because some of you guys aren't really doing much. Alex, you're at the bottom, but I wouldn't say you're one of the bottom. I think just keep doing what you're doing and hopefully your equity tomorrow goes up. Guys, listen up. We're going to change what we want you to do in your approach today. So between now and three o'clock, we want you to be able to trade multiple correlated pairs and take a minimum of two trades from now until three o'clock so that we can actually benchmark what you're doing. Understood? Yep. Yourself and Travis, you both broke the rules from when I've said you have to talk to me if you want to close a trade below a one-to-one. -one. It was a break-even, it was a When did we teach to move to break-even? Move to break-even, you damage your probability. Because if you move to break-even, you're more likely to get whipsawed out of break-even and then you're back at square one. So if you want to close a trade, I was going to say it one more time, if you want to close a trade below a one-to-one, -one, you must come and talk to me. If I'm in a meeting, then talk to Elliot, yeah? No one should be moving to break even, yeah? Break even is a failed plan on intraday trading on FX. It does not work. I was just, I see the dollar that it was strong, it's going up, so I decided to put it on break even and what, what happened? You know? And it did actually hit my stop loss because it was on break even, so I didn't lose anything. Even I was protecting the capital, I, I just put it in break even just, just, to, just to be on zero because I, 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 I was looking to that, the chart and it wasn't going so, going, going so my direction. So I feel like I have to put it in break even. So it's hard to, to, to do these, these kind of tradings in this small amount of, my, of time. Honestly, scalping, it's not my, my strongest point. I would rather prefer to do like a swing trade. Alex is very emotional. He's a very emotional person. And it's because he wants to, he wants to be a success so bad that he's self-sabotaging himself. So he's, he's breaking his own rules. He's, he's scared of doing bad because he, wants, he doesn't want to go home. But by doing that, he's damaging his trades. He's moving his trades to break even on the five minute chart, which is causing a whipsaw behavior. He's getting stopped out with six pounds profit. It's not gonna make any money. The advice that he gave me that it was emotional, definitely it's emotion. But I don't think it's only emotion. There's some pressure outside of my body. I mean, it's pressure. I mean, we're on challenge. We want to, everybody wants to keep going on. and wants to be in the final and maybe win the show but it's something composing like mixed together with emotional pressings and stuff that maybe i can't explain it's trading you know it's it's not easy if you move to break even trade in a five minute time frame how many times throughout your trades over the last three days have you seen you go into profit and then go into a loss how many every single one probably 80 90 percent 
So if you're moving to break even, you're going to come out at break even, yeah? You must be hitting those one-to-ones. So today is crunch time, understood? I really like the way he's teaching us how to trade. It's different than what I was having experience with before, but there's certain rules that we're following for a reason. Um, but the trading is good. I do find it quite tricky in some scenarios. I want to get the best entries, but regardless, the trading is uh, it's a good strategy for sure. Uh, the rule I broke so far was closing out a trade early. Uh, it was about a one-to-one, -one, just a couple pips close to my take profit. And I was at the grocery store and I couldn't message him because I don't have Telegram because I'm on a temporary UK number. So I just closed it. But by the rule, I was supposed to ask for permission before it hit the one-to-one. -one. So broke a rule, but I'm trying not to break any more. So we're now on the final day of week two. These guys have now been trading for one week. And actually these guys have done above and beyond what we anticipated and actually what the percentages of retail traders show. Um, you know, obviously we've taught them how I trade and so that should give them a bit of an advantage. And we know that, you know, in the region of 85% of traders to 90% of traders, retail traders lose their money. So at this moment in time, we've got 10 out of our 12 traders profitable up taking good risk management trades. That's a rare sight. If we look back and go back to the last series, at this point, these guys were losing money left, right and center and getting the rules wrong. The only rule these guys are breaking at this moment in time is closing their trades before achieving a one-to-one -one profit factor. Now, what that does is long-term, it means that they have to have a much higher win ratio to stay profitable. Whereas if they can just move that profit factor up a little bit to 1.2, 1.5, it means that they've got to win less trades to maintain profitability. With this in mind, it actually makes it very hard for us to make the next cut, which is a great problem to have. So what we've now done is we've now allowed and forced these traders to say, look, we want you to take at least two valid setups today and document your skills on being able to place those trade effectively. Now we don't mind if they win or lose that. We just want to see their skill set, the capability of identifying the trade, placing it, managing it, risk management, all of that sort of stuff to help us take the right people through to the next phase. I had a trade overnight which uh, ended up just about take profit and uh, seen some rejection so uh, came out just below what it was at, I think I'm a 1.5 to 1 so good trade yeah yeah made some yeah nice profit on that one so just looking to find a nice setup today get the right setup yeah I'm, I'm looking at two or three setups hopefully they'll pan out but they're not there yet so just just watching waiting yeah. happy as always we're doing all right we're doing well in the week um, I trade last night as well that hit take profit, bank 400. I had another trade this morning about half eight, bought a pound USD and that hit take profit as well for another 250, so up 750 on the week. Every day is 3% and one more trade for the day and then done for the week. I'm going to see on the AUD USD for long or Euro GBP for short. That's my plan for today. This is one heck of a trader here, just so you know. Competition. <laughs> sort of. Still learning, just trying to take all the things that Sam's teaching us in. Uh, you know, keep taking my notes, keep tra taking trades that make sense and follow the plan and stick to it. Um, currently down in the account about half a percent, but hopefully we can change that by the end of the day and see where it falls. They're the two people that are just not at their desks. They're the one, they're the two that are just walking around, talking to each other, Still? walking around. So, yeah, like all the time. If I get up, get a drink or anything, they're, they're the two, they're either one of those two I know. I said to Travis earlier, I was like, he was like, what, what feedback did you give me? I'm like, you're not concentrating. I was like, you, you, every time I stand up, you're walking around doing this. He's like, I'm trying to leave my trading set and forget about it. But, <coughs> I don't know, that's his excuse. But. 
possible. Yeah, I, I prefer to place the trade and then let it let it play out. I don't think there's a need for me to sit in front of the computer on a trade that's open, unless it comes to areas of importance, points of interest, and I'll set an alert on my phone, which I have for all of them. And when it gets there, I'll monitor it and see if I should close it early, talk to Sam, stop loss, take profits hit. Once these trades are set, I let them I let them play out regardless of where I'm sitting. If I'm sitting there monitoring the current trades that are open, I might get too lost. I guess they say lost in the sauce. They might get a little confused with the overall position or take every candlestick to heart. And I might end up getting a little worried about the trade rather than letting it play out with the overall trend. Today I've taken a short on USDCHF. Um, the daily moving averages turned down. They turned down in this area today, or yesterday. So that gave us the go ahead to look for shorts today onto the 15. And the 15 is also looking bearish. So I uh, got my little pin bar and engulfing and took my short there. And then I'm also in gold. Gold, I've been waiting for a pullback for a while now. It's kind of the same story. Um, the daily and the moving averages on the 15 all make sense on gold here. I'll make that a little bigger for you. Uh, give us our pin bar followed by an engulfing. So I went ahead and took my long. So take profit is up here at R1 and my stop loss is you know, well below. So hopefully it goes in my favor. I'm in a position which is currently in profit, but we'll see what happens throughout the day. Dollar, Japanese yen, uh, going long. Hold this trade for the time being, but I'm just carrying on looking, trying to find other setups to get into at the moment. I'm just looking at the news that's coming out in 24 minutes. That affects the euro, so I might wait for that to pass, and then looking to get in a, into another position. I held UJ overnight, um, 368, and then I entered uh, GU this morning. I got a percent out of that. I'm now in um, AU, uh, currently down, but I'm at back. The account, the account is back in profit at the moment. I believe we've got to take another trade as well, so I am going to scout out for another trade. Yeah, I'm in two trades. I'm in a, a USD Swiss franc sell, and I'm in a odd USD buy. They're kind of correlated, but Sam today said that we could trade some correlated pairs and tr trade two minimum just to see if we have some sort of trades that he can kind of mark us on. So they're heavily correlated right now. I'm floating about a percent negative on the account. Uh, the account overall just sits just over positive. I would say 0 0.7, 0 0.8% down on the overall account with the floating trades. To be honest, I, I do think I do think I have potential trading, and I do think I have some skill in trading with whatever my past experience was. But my current performance, I would say, is on the mediocre side. It just seems like the trades I'm getting into, the entries just aren't good. But the overall direction has turned out quite well in a lot of the trades. I think out of the seven trades that are closed, I'm in green for five of them. But the losses are substantial compared to what I'm getting early as well on the trades that are winning. I am looking to short. Um, pound Aussie um, yeah. is reaching the R1 at the moment. Made a bullish rally in the bearish trend here in the 200 MA. So I'm looking to show it. I'm in a trade at the moment, um, currently down USD CHF short. Just waiting for it to break the UK pivot and head back down to um, the previous lows. And overall, it's, it's bearish. so that looked like a good trade to, to go ahead with. Um, Cold USD, way, way too tight to stop loss. I'm just a bit annoyed, so I'm just sort of 
happening at lunch break because it was like a sloppy, sloppy era. So this morning I took a trade on dollars with Frank. Um, yeah, this hit my 1% stop loss year. Yeah. Sort of coming against me now. I had a rubbish entry this morning. Really rubbish entry. Um, so we're just something to note down and take take note. That's my first stop loss. That's my first losing trade. Out of three. Um, so I'm just going to note it down and then I, my entry was rubbish, so I can under, I can understand. Once I placed it, Elliot came over and spoke to me and said, said it was a rubbish entry. And I, I totally agree where he's coming from. I bought a short order at the lows, so it doesn't make no sense. But. Close to getting stopped out here. I don't think I'm even going to make it to the news. I was long on gold. The entry wasn't bad. It just didn't pan out, unfortunately. The stock loss is here. It's already been hit, so it's not going to show. So 250 on it, but I lost 250 on that trade. So that's another one. Overall balance, 24,332. So down. I'm done for today. I've been stopped out on all my trades, and I, I can justify all the trades and why I took them, and I think all of them, except for one, fit the strategy to a T, um, but it just hasn't panned out so far. I felt the, the sentiment was all good. I thought it might push up before the news. Didn't get that, but obviously my stop loss is below the pivot, below the moving average, so comfortably out of the way, so hopefully, hopefully we get the push up. U.S. retail sales stayed strong last month as consumer demand for goods increased, even as production and supply chain issues continued. Retail sales rose seven-tenths of a percent in September, following an upwardly revised nine-tenths increase in August, according to the Commerce Department. Ex-auto sales increased eight-tenths of a percent in September. Markets were expecting a decline of two-tenths of a percent on the headline and a five-tenths increase ex-auto. Restaurants and bars were strong, rising three percent in September after a two-tenths increase the prior month. So guys, you've been involved with the Real Forex Trader Series now for a fair few episodes. If you think you have what it takes to be one of these candidates in our next series, click the link in the description below and apply. I wish you the best of luck and let's see if you can make it to the end. Who's come out? Yeah, I don't know what to do really. Yeah. Gold is selling off, but I might get in anyway because it could just be a whipsaw effect from news. We could run up more trade when news has just come out in favour of the US dollar so I'm just gonna have a little look. No moves. That's something strange. Uh, up a dollar yeah it was good news it made it stronger but um, I already stopped up before the news came in so it didn't really affect it made it, it would have made it worse up but it's stopped up. I think you've got good skill set, just need to demonstrate it, try to get a nice trade that you can show us, yeah? I think I think you have what it takes, I think you maybe you're a bit reserved as a person, I think just maybe have a little bit more confidence in what you're doing and just carry on doing what you're doing, I just want you to not be in that category of risk of going home, yeah? Just because you didn't do the, the risk, but find another one for today, let's make it count, yeah? Alright, nice one. Uh, with the actual rules, uh, who are great for the USD, can we stay short on the USD? On your USD? On the USD everywhere. We, we, we can't actually short today USD if the news are great. 
because um, we, we stick uh, we stick to the analytic uh, point. Because of why can't you short it? Sorry. Why can't you short the dollar? Because of the news. Because they are great. You can still, if you believe that you think that the price is going to turn around, there's still some valid setups. Um, I caught a nice short on US dollar CAD, um, just literally just now, um, probably 10 minutes ago, and it's moving in my favour already. So there's definitely trades that you can still take. Just got to be picky, yeah. Thanks. Hey, buddy. Um, so yeah, just going through some of your trades. Yep. If we can. Let's just try to get, try to get one more, yeah? One more, yeah. I'm in one now, the second one of the day. Yeah. Do one more? Yeah. Try, try to, yeah. If you can't find one, you can't find one. No, yeah, no worries. If you can, let's just try to get, I just don't want you to be in that bracket that's going home. I don't want to be in that section. I want you just to take one more trade, show what you, you know, you can actually yeah. achieve it. You store Swiss was a really bad trade, but. Yeah, I might do shit. Yeah. Sorry. Let's try to, let's try to get one good one, yeah? Yeah, no worries. All right, nice one. Thanks. So it's coming to the end of the day of week two, and we've got to send some individuals home now, reallocate the capital in order to grow going into next week. And I don't know whether or not, you know, going into the third series, I'm becoming a bit more of a softy. I've been quite hard on them, but behind closed doors, some of these guys are really nice guys and they genuinely want to do well. The issue that we've got is some of the problems that we have, we just cannot fix in a few days. This stuff takes weeks, months to be able to fix. The, the two individuals that we're debating on sending home and we're stuck on which one to send home is between Alex and Christian. Christian, up until now in the challenge, has been um, a, a pretty picture-perfect candidate, applying himself, uh, reviewing what he's doing, where he's going wrong. But where we're at now is today, he's lost over $1,000 in his trading account. And that is based off the fact, half of that was based off him um, buying gold, losing that trade, and then buying it again. Whether that's revenge trading, but buying back into one that you've already lost on, you should move away from that, let it settle down, and come back to that another day and focus on something else. Um, so we've got a mix of that and we've got over trading going on. So he's on a four loss streak just today and I don't think it's slowing down. I think we're gonna see potentially more losses. So we really need him to understand that he's over trading, shouldn't be adding to losses and whether or not that is gonna transpire this afternoon. Alex is very emotional. He's a very emotional person. And unfortunately, he's kind of put the nail in the coffin right now is when we taught these traders to trade, they had to trade the major pairs plus euro yen and pound yen and gold. And he's trading uh, New Zealand dollar against the Canadian dollar at this moment in time um, and pound against the Aussie dollar. And both of these pairs were never taught to them to trade. Um, and so I think that he's getting ahead of himself panicking about his positions and that emotional side can take a while to fix and and eliminate. Brandon Dickinson, that's your own yen. Gone to but he hasn't actually performed that well. Not today, no. And he took the US dollar Swiss trade, which is a bit of a letdown. <laughs> Christian's near the bottom. He's lost there. The US dollar Swiss was a shit trade. Aussie dollar was a reasonable, reasonable trade. All right, out of the ten left, these three are like the weakest, I'd say. We've made our decision now on who's going to be leaving today. Um, it was very hard. It's quite a lot in the bottom. There's only a few actually in the topper sort of spectrum. So um, yeah, it was a tough call, but the two individuals, first of all, the first one going home is yourself, unfortunately Alex. Um, yeah, trading stuff that's not on the sheet to trade. So trading New Zealand dollar against the Canadian dollar, trading um, pound Aussie dollar, yeah. So none of those are actually in the training that we taught to trade. And um, this morning when I said, you either close at 1% loss on the 250, um, or you close at a one-to-one -one minimum, 
and he did a uh, bit you closed out obviously that one at six pounds one at 150 so it's just um, yeah unfortunately it's uh, time to call it I think unfortunately I think honestly I think it's genuinely just to your emotions I think you have the I, have, I think you have the capacity to be a good trader and do well I just don't think that we've got the time frame to be able to achieve that in where I need to be by next week so hopefully that's Good feedback before a bad result, I suppose. Yeah. And the second person is nifty, unfortunately, just not doing enough. Um, yeah, there's just not much there. We just we've had a few trades. It's been very hard to sort of benchmark where you're at and what you're doing. And I think that you're actually probably quite nervous to place trades, make a mistake. Um, and again, I still think you've got a great capacity. It's not the end of the journey necessarily, with Samuel Co. You can talk to some of the guys over here. You know, you've had the education. It could be the fact that it just takes you a little bit longer and you might end up going and getting funded with Samuel and Co. later down the line, yeah? Uh, for everybody else, what we're gonna do is I've got to call you all in one by one for a meeting. Tell us exactly where you're at, what we need to see from you and where you are actually ranked against everybody else, all right? Perfect. I'll let you say goodbyes to these guys and then I'll start calling you in into the boardroom one by one. All right? That's good. Great job, Jimmy. I know it was a tough day. Well done. Sorry. Well done, well done. Done well. Good job, mate. Take care, mate. Nice to meet you all. Yeah, and Jimmy, mate. Lovely to meet you. Pleasure. Where are you going? Where are you going? Keep on going, man. For sure. It's a good time. Good experience. Like I say, thank you. Yeah, good experience, yeah, actually. Good experience. I learned a lot. I learned really well. Yeah. Feel bad. <laughs> Feel bad because you're leaving. One of the one of the guys who are leaving this on, on this stage, and I don't know. I just want to thank for thanks God actually for doing this to me. I won't stop. This is not the the end. You know, it's. I think it's a big step forward for me, and uh, I will. I will. I will be a trader. <laughs> I will be. I'm pretty confident. I mean, I'm disciplined. I wasn't risking more than half percent per, per trade. Um, not, not even the percent per day that he told us. And for example, today I made three trades in three and a half percent, but before I made the third trade, I asked him if it's possible or not. Um, unfortunately, it didn't went, didn't went my, my favor. I was following the strategy as it is, as in the, in the book, but it didn't went to my to my favor. No, I definitely don't feel like I'm the weakest one. It's definitely land. There's people that they're very green and not on it. It's I've, I'm one of the one of the strongest here. That's what I feel like it. For for shots, I feel you know. I feel I feel sad that I'm leaving. I feel, I say, I feel like I could have gave more. I feel like I haven't really been tested, to be fair. But overall, it's been it's been great. It's been it's been amazing. It's been, you know, I've learned a lot. Not just trading about myself. So from a, from a competition that's only lasting three weeks. That's, that's, that's enough for me, that's, that's good. That's good that I, I took something from it. But yeah, overall, just devastated, man, devastated. I thought I, thought, I, thought I could last a bit longer, but unfortunately not. I think, um, I think um, it was the quantity of trades. They wanted more trades. Whether it be, um, they, they just wanted more trades. I wasn't placing a lot of trades, I was, placed, I was, I was conservative. Um, every trade that I placed um, had a reason for the trade, and uh, I just wait, I just waited for the, I would say in my eyes, a, a good setup to for me to take that trade, but they just wanted um, they just wanted quantity, they just wanted more trades, and I get that, I get that.
and that's what I wasn't doing, so that's why I'm here. You know, they know more than me, they know what a, a good trader looks like, so in their eyes they definitely see something that's within the time frame that they have that I can't, you know, that I can't be the person to, to overcome, to, to be that trader within the time frame they have, and so in their eyes it, may, it makes sense why. Next time on The Real Forex Trader. Got an absolute shit start to the day. Um, one of the contestants has been assaulted and got beaten up by one of the other contestants and his mate. Just absolutely crazy. You just cannot make this shit up. Just a few drinks, wasn't really any excessive drinking up to that point. So they were just arguing over that. It must have instantly knocked him out. So I ran in, it was just like, like punching him. So I was like shitting myself, thinking like, I thought it was, oh, it was horrible, mate. And I was just like, so um, yeah. Then the police, obviously, the police, the police came, the ambulance came, and, and so guys, you've been involved with the Real Forex Trader series now for a fair few episodes. If you think you have what it takes to be one of these candidates in our next series, click the link in the description below and apply. I wish you the best of luck, and let's see if you can make it to the end.